Let's check out the sequencer. I'm in patch mode right now. I'm going to switch to the middle option here, which is the sequencer. And now we have all the options for the sequencer displayed on these buttons. I can hit that start button to start the sequence. So a sequence is running, which is using the manual mode sound that we have set up. But we can hit this button over here. And when all the LEDs are off, now we can select from any of the 128 preset sequences. So for example, if I load in preset number 23, so this preset will have a particular sequence as well as an associated patch. So whenever you load in a sequence, just be aware that it will also load in an associated patch. But if you don't want that to happen, you can switch back to patch mode, load up a particular patch that you want to play back. I'm just going to switch to manual mode and then switch back to the sequence mode. So now we're hearing our sound, but the sequence from this patch number 23. The little dot there next to 23 indicates that we are no longer hearing the preset patch. Let's go ahead and load in a different preset. So let's say I pick number 12. You'll notice here the sequence is only using 8 steps and it's moving in this forward reverse direction pattern. Alright, let's now check out all the different controls on the sequencer. If you tap the note button, the green LEDs show which steps have a note stored in them. So the sequence has additional notes, but it's just on using them. If you want to change a note, just tap and hold the step button. You can see the note that's been assigned to it, but you can just tap any key to change that. You can even just tap a key to turn off that particular step. So that's how you add rests. So again, tap and hold a step and then just tap a key on the keyboard to assign that note to the step. Alright, so that's how you add and remove notes. Next is a gate control. So here you can adjust the gate time for each step that has a note. If you just tap on the step, you will see the gate time. To change the value, just hold down the step and with the value dial, we can change the gate time for that step. I'll make this step really short so you can hear it. And now if I make it longer, you can hear the difference there. Cool. Next is Glide. Now we already have a global glide control here, but in this step sequencer, you can choose which notes will have the glide. So right now, none of the notes have glide, but if I turn on some of these steps, now those specific steps will have the glide engaged on. Now we'll skip this parameter for a second, move on to the next one, which is perform. So now we have a bunch of different options related to the playback of the sequencer. So for example, you can see the different direction modes over here. So right now it's in this back and forth mode. If I switch it to this, so now it's playing back just forward. Backwards. And there's also a random mode. I'll switch back to the forward mode. You can also adjust the first and last step. So if I tap and hold here, and with the value dial, I can adjust the first step. So you can see here now, the fifth step is the first step. And now we're back to one. The next one is for the last step. So right now you can see it's only up to eight. So I can change that to 16. And now the whole sequence is being used. Tap and hold this button. And with the value dial, you can add some swing. And you can hear that as well. Might be a bit too much. Let's tone it down a little bit. Right now it's playing 16th notes per step, but we can change that to 8th, quarter, 16th triplets, 8th triplets, and quarter triplets. The tempo of the sequence can be changed by tapping and holding here. Right now it's at 106, but with the value dial, I can change that. All 
All right, now let's talk about this parameter option. So when that is selected, you can assign an individual value for any of the hardware dials on individual steps in the sequencer. You can see in the sequence, some parameter has already been assigned to specific steps, but we can change that. Just tap and hold a step and rotate a dial, let's say the cutoff, and now for that step, we have assigned a cutoff value. Now it sounds like it's the same for the rest of the steps, but let's say I tap and hold here and assign a different cutoff value. Now you can hear from the first step to about that fifth step, we have a higher cutoff value and then it drops down. So like this, we can go ahead and assign different positions on that cutoff dial to the different steps. And now we have a dynamically changing cutoff dial. Just keep in mind for one step, you can only have one parameter value. Like for example, I have the cutoff here. If I try to assign another parameter, it'll override the cutoff. But I have another step here. I can choose a different parameter, let's say the resonance. Maybe I'll add another resonance change in a different blank step. So now the sequence has two different parameters that are changing, not on each step, but across the entire sequence. Let's try a different parameter. So let's say for this step, let's change the release. And I'll change the release again for this step. And maybe for that second one, I'll replace the resonance with the decay. It's a bummer that you can't add multiple parameters to a particular step, but it's still pretty amazing how you can create these really dynamic sequences with parameters changing per step. All right, in the next tutorial, we'll check out some of the settings for the sequencer.